guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Tribes Dawn of Humanity. In the game Tribes, you'll be playing as a tribe of humans going through the Paleolithic, Neolithic, and Bronze Age of Humanity. You'll attempt to complete achievements, gather more tribes members, move across the land, and do a couple other things that involve gaining strength and whatnot. As you complete achievements, you'll gain victory points, and of course you're going to gain victory points for placing down certain tracks before other players. Other players will be doing the same thing and attempting to gather the best resources they possibly can for their tribe. At the end of the game, you're going to score tooth, which is points, based on the specific locations you have accomplished, as well as you're going to be gathering points for how strong your tribe is, uh, how much procreation you have, and much exploring you have, and so on and so forth. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game, which triggers after two events from the Bronze Age happen, is going to be the winner of the game, Tribes. Let's go ahead and take a look down below at what you get in the game, how to play, and how to win. So here we have the game Tribes, Dawn of Humanity, and it plays up to four players, but we're going to be doing two. We have gray and we have white here, so that means we're going to have black and brown over here to the side. Every single player is going to get all their tribes people, all of their cubes, as well as four cubes that we'll be placing on these four tracks here. You've got Fight, Movement, Explore, and Appropriate. They all start on the one symbol, which is their basic strength for each of the tracks. Additionally, you're going to pull out three tiles from this bag here with this little Explore token on it, and as long as you don't get any duplicates, you're going to place them down in a triangle like so. Then you're also going to place one of your tribes people down on any of the three tiles. Every player will also get five seashells, as well as this arrow marker, which will let you advance on this track in a unique way. You're going to take the six action tiles and place them down randomly from left to right, and you'll be putting them on the top of the board, but so that you guys can see, I went ahead and set it at the bottom here. In a two-player game, the second player is going to get one of these teeth, which is basically victory points, and then in a three-player game and a four-player game, they'll also have assigned point values for the last players. Go ahead and set the point trackers here, the point teeth over here on the side. They have ones, twos, threes, fours, and sixes here. There's also five tiles for each of the different eras. You have Paleolithic, Neolithic, and the Bronze Era. You're going to set four of these tiles randomly, because there's a total of five, down face up at the bottom here. And then you're also going to set four of them in the middle area and the top area face down so that nobody knows what they are. Over here are going to be the action tiles, and basically whenever you place cubes on certain areas of the board with these little, uh, little lightning bolts here, you'll be taking one of these and placing it at the end of the track, which will give you special abilities or actions depending on if you choose them on the track. After you've done that, the game is pretty much ready to go, and the first player, the person who doesn't have a point, is going to be the one who starts. To begin the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to select any of these abilities down this track. However, for each ability you don't select that as the first, you're going to need to place a seashell on that ability in order to gain the next ability. So for instance, if I wanted to go ahead and move here, I'd place a seashell here and I could take this. When I take this, I'd set it on the back of the track here, and I'd push it across. Let's go ahead and explain all of the different actions here. The first action here is going to be Appropriate, which is basically to gather more units based on your appropriation track here, which is one, and it could go all the way up to three. This over here is another option, so you can choose either or, and that's to complete an achievement. And that is going to be completing these guys here. When you complete these, these will unlock, and when you complete these, these will unlock. There's also moving, which will allow you to move your tribe's members based on your movement speed, which is of course one to start, but can advance throughout the game, allowing you to move a tribe or tribe's members from one space to an adjacent space. There's also going to be uh, this the space here, which is going to allow you to explore. And exploring is simply taking these tiles from this bag here and placing them down the board. If you get doubles at this point, though, you just get doubles, and that's how it works. And, of course, that's going to be based on your explore value here. The last little track here, which is fighting, is also going to allow you to move up here. And most of the time, fighting is just going to allow you to gain victory points and other useful uh, things from these decks here. That doesn't have a purpose as far as gaining victory points at the end of the game. Uh, so you're going to be trying to utilize a fight whenever you do actions from this tile base here. And that's the basic idea of the game. Uh, there's additionally this little token here, which if you're going down this track here, so for instance if you unlock something like this one here, this one will then flip over. And maybe if somebody has unlocked this one over here, and this gets flipped over, on your turn you can utilize this to go a different route. However, when you do that, every player can do that as well. So for instance, this player usually can only go from here to here, but now they can go from here to here, even though they haven't unlocked this from going here. So use these as you will. You only get one, so make sure it is of value to you when you do so. Uh, then let's go ahead and begin. I'll show you a couple rounds of play so you get an idea of how it works. 
Right now, this player here, he has got, uh, he's on one of these wheat symbols here. So if he wants, he can actually take this tile here and move it across. He's then gonna choose one of the two abilities, either appropriate or he can go ahead and choose to complete an achievement. And he'll complete an achievement, which means that he's going to need at least one unit on a space that corresponds to this specific symbol. So he does have that, he has the wheat, so he can take one of his markers and place it down. When you place down one of your tokens or one of your cubes on a specific area, and you always go from left to right, you're then going to acquire victory points based on the number. So he's going to get two victory points for doing so. If he were to place a cube on this space here with the little marker, then he was going to, he would go ahead and take one of these out. He'd flip this over, he'd place this down, and then he would move this to the end of the track. These are one shots though. Once you use them once, they will go away. So he went ahead and acquired this achievement. Very, very useful because now it unlocks this. And if he ever has two guys on these spaces here, he will then be able to place another cube on the far left-hand space. He's taken his action, so it's the next player's turn. The next player can choose to move, or he can choose to move slash complete an achievement, or he can choose to try and gather more units. Um, additionally, what's interesting too is because this player here actually placed one of these cubes on this track here, it shows a little up arrow with a baby, which means that the brown player is going to advance his marker up the track on this specific area here. So the next time he chooses to uh, procreate, he's going to gather two tribesmen on the spaces he is occupying instead of just one. Pretty cool, right? This player doesn't want to do this. He'd probably much rather do this. He does have a character on the space here, so he will actually spend one seashell, ignoring the space, and he'll take this action instead, moving it to the very back. And now he's going to complete an achievement as well. So he's gonna take one of these symbols here, or these tokens here, and place it here. That's gonna gather him two points, as well as it's going to trigger this one here. So in this case, this goes here, and then this will go at the very end. This is a woolly rhinoceros. It says your tribe loses two victory points if your tribe is the weakest. So if you choose this and your tribe is the weakest, then you're going to lose two victory points. Note that this is the track which indicates whether you are the strongest or weakest. In this case, then you're going to have, uh, this is white and white would be the strongest at two and gray would be the weakest at one. And in this case, both players are both the strongest and the weakest. So if either player were to select this, then the, that player who selected it would be the person who loses two victory points. So keep note of that. He chose his action. He's going to move up on the feet, which will move up one here. So now whenever he moves, he can move two units instead of one. Additionally, this is going to now unlock. So if he ever gets two guys on two wheats, he will be able to utilize this space as well. Back to this player's turn again. Uh, let's say that he wants to go to the sheep. So he will go ahead and take this action here move it down the rondelle. He'll gather this specific seashell, and then he can move, based on the number of feet he has, he'll move that many units. So he's got one, so he can move one unit, but he only has one anyway, so he'll move it over there. Which means the next time he wants to complete a, a specific objective here, he can go ahead and do so, which will give him another one of these cards here, a token, uh, one of these tiles here, as well as getting two victory points. Let's go ahead and do another action. Uh, let's go ahead and have the white player procreate. So this player is gonna go ahead and take this action. And we'll look at his procreation track, which is just one, which will allow him to place one unit on a space where one of his other units occupy. So now he's got two tribes members, thanks to um, having at least one, which everybody starts with anyway. But that will allow him to gather different points of interest so that he can start accomplishing these achievements as well as even the more difficult ones, which are these here. Back to this player's turn as well. He's now going to have to decide what he wants to do, and he will go ahead and choose to explore. So he'll move this down, and based on his explore track, which is one, he'll pull a tile from the bag, and then he'll place it down anywhere he wants as long as it's adjacent to one of his other tiles. Bam, just like that, giving him more symbols, which will allow him to gain more, po more points throughout the game and occupy certain areas to achieve certain victory conditions. And the game will keep going on like that as players start to accomplish specific areas, flipping over new tiles here, up to the point where they're able to accomplish these areas here, which are in fact much more difficult to accomplish, you'll start getting these guys out. When two of these, or base, X based on the number of players, uh, get accomplished, that will uh, trigger the end of the game, in which case the round will end, and the player with the most victory points at the end is the winner. Victory points is determined by the amount of teeth you have, as well as the amount of tiles that you have unflipped, as well as how many tribes members you have uh, comparatively to everybody else. The one little thing I also wanted to mention here as well, when you accomplish certain victory conditions, like for instance, you have this one here, let's say that this guy had one guy here and one guy here, and he wanted to accomplish this, so he was gonna use this action here. He'd move this to the back, 
like that. And he has one symbol, but he's going to need another. And because he doesn't have another symbol, he can actually flip this over and use it as a wild at the cost of having one flipped over, which could mean you lose victory points at the end of the game for doing so. But then that will allow him to place, if he had one here, uh, his cube over here, gaining him four victory points, as well as, of course, triggering an event. So you are able to, even if you do not have the symbols required, flip over other symbols to then make them wild, allowing you to go to certain areas on the board. Uh, and the same can be said for these areas as well. So that is the basic idea of the game. Players are going to advance along this tracker, gain as many points as they possibly can, keep as many of these unflipped as possible, and of course procreate as much as possible as well. The player with the best civilization at the end of the game, Tribes, is going to be the winner. Let's come up and talk about it. So what do I think about the game Tribes, Dawn of Humanity? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about a couple caveats. And what I want to talk about is, of course, these action tiles here that get flipped over. I explained them a little bit, but I want to go ahead and go over a couple of them. Most of the yellow ones can be negative effects, but there are some positive ones, and it's usually based on strength. Having more strength in the game doesn't give you victory points at the end, but it does give you victory points throughout the game. Here's one. Earthquake. Your tribe exhausts three of its land tiles, which means if you have less than the highest player with unflipped over tiles, you're going to lose those two points. Epidemic. All tribes lose two members each. Same, same, same thing. Uh, extreme Cold. Your tribe loses three members. Brown Bear. Your tribe loses two victory points if your tribe is the weakest. Uh, Wildfile. All, all tribes exhaust two of their land tiles. And one more. Raid. Your tribe gains three victory points if your tribe is the strongest. And then let's go with the uh, Neolithic Era. Uh, enslavement. Your tribe procreates according to its strength value. Giant Beaver, your tribe gains two victory points if your tribe is the strongest. Conquest, your tribe explores according to its strength value. Journey, your tribe moves according to its strength value. A lot to do with strength value, and most of them will have a symbol down below explaining which stat it is that they are uh, referencing. So that is the basic idea with that. And also, don't forget to include the points on the far left-hand trackers. If you get a certain, if you get to a certain area up on those tracks, you're going to get victory points at the end of the game based on how far you get. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much all you need to know about the game. And the first thing I can say about this game is it is a wonderful civilization game. It's very relaxing, very calming, and has very little take that in any way. The way it functions as far as you playing against other players is there are certain actions you might want, and they might want as well. And when you choose those actions, they're going to go to the end, in which case it might cost them more to select certain actions. Additionally, certain actions you may or may not want to take might actually have seashells on them, which you will need throughout the game. So if you select that action, that will give you more seashells for later turns, which allow you to select later actions when you need them the most, which can be very beneficial. Whereas if you don't have any seashells, you always have to take the first action, which can be very, very detrimental. So weighing those pros and cons is very important. When you select the specific bonus tiles is also important as well, because they start to stack up if you do not select them. And for the most part, you're going to want to have a certain amount of strength in your tribe to make sure you get the most victory points you can out of them. Utilizing your tableau is important. It comes down to giving, getting four points at the end of the game if you're able to have the most villagers and or tribes people, as well as if you have, have the most unflipped tiles. So not flipping tiles and not killing villagers is really important. But what's more important is making sure that you get the specific tiles uh, and your tribes people on specific areas to gather the far left hand points. Because the far left is going to give you the most, which means you're the first person to get there. And then it gets less and less. And always remember the lightning is always going to put a new tile down onto the rondelle. Uh, the game, I guess, has very few negatives. I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, this game, we played it two and three players multiple times. We never got that fourth player, but I imagine it would be played very similar to three players. Um, but what's really interesting with it is how the actions are selected throughout the game. That was a lot of fun. The artwork is really nice as well. It felt like I was playing a Civ style game. And of course the theme ties in very well as you're going throughout the eras, the game progresses nice and smoothly and things start going awry at the very end there where you're gonna have to select certain actions you may or may not want to to end the game. And let's say you're in ahead by a certain amount of points. You might want to end the game, but it's going to be at the cost of either losing tribes members, slipping over certain tiles. So you have to weigh those options. Do you want other players to start catching up? Or is it now your time to end the game? And as the person in the lead, it kind of gives you, gives the other players a chance to kind of catch up in, in certain areas. The first game we played to this game, it was a tie up until the third tiebreaker. So you tie with the teeth, 
and then you tie with the tiles and so on and so forth up into the very last one. So it felt very, very, very close as we were playing this game. So it works really, really well two players. So if you're looking for a two player game, this one actually really, really does it, even though I guess most people probably wouldn't assume that based on looking at it, but it plays very well at two players. And three players as well. Had a lot of fun. The action started getting a little more condensed. If everybody wants to move, you have to kind of regulate which actions you take and why, which is not another interesting thing that I really, really enjoyed about the game. One negative I guess I can say is as you move up these specific achievement tracks here, it'll tell you to move up on these tracks as well. And I forgot about it a lot of times. And sometimes if you forget about it, you're going to lose out on certain action, certain bonuses to your actions. So you have to be very, very, very diligent moving up those tracks because they'll also give you victory points at the end of the game. So don't miss that. I don't know. Maybe it was just me, but for some reason I just, there was like two or two times, maybe three times with me and Grant both specifically where we actually were not remembering to move our tracks up. And so that was kind of a little thing there. There's almost no luck in the game other than pretty much what random tiles pop out, but you have so much choice in this game. If you like specific actions leading to meaningful value and you feel like it's your fault for not doing a specific thing or what, oh, if only I did this action at this point in time, then I would do better. This game is going to progressively get better and better for you because the more you play it, the better you're gonna understand it and the better you're going to manipulate your tableau to in fact increase your civilization. Overall Tribes is a splendid game. We really, really enjoyed this one, and I strongly recommend it for any of you that even think this might sound like something that's interesting for you. Overall, solid game, Tribes.